People very often ask me, Dr. Sui, you are getting old. Why won't you retire and enjoy your years of retirement with your wife and members of your family? Yes, I could have done that, but I couldn't do so. I cannot retire yet. I realize I still have so many things left undone in my life. So many things I want to do for Sarawak and the people of Sarawak. An ancient scholar Chen Zhi said, Life is not without duties and responsibilities. And if there are left undone and unfulfilled, you have to carry them with you till the end of your life. Another Chinese scholar, Liang Qichao, said, The greatest burden one may bear in life are your duties and responsibilities left undone, left unfulfilled. I'm getting old, but I still have very strong convictions to do more for Sarawak, hoping to bring about change for a better Sarawak. My political conscience keep telling me that I cannot remain where I am. Yes, I have been in government for the past 30 years. I was the speaker of Dewang Unangan Negri, a member of the Sarawak cabinet holding various portfolios, including Minister of Finance. You may ask, Dr. Sui, have you not done enough all these years? I must admit that I have not done enough. You see, based on the Westminster's model of democracy, government leaders and members of the cabinet are bound by collective decision and collective responsibility. The minority must follow the majority. Under such a system, one simply cannot do what one expires to do, one has to just toe the line. Under such democratic system, it makes it possible for certain dominant group of leaders to override policy formulation and implementation. In spite of the rhetoric of power sharing, we see the reality of certain dominant groups dominating and doing things against the call for greater equality, justice and fair play. Such tendency would negate efforts at building a united multiracial society. Towards this end, there is very little one can do what one believes in. In 2014, many of us were sacked from SUPP. And if you choose to disagree, to go along with the dominant or the majority group, you just have to resign and leave. We are left with no choice but to form UPP and later rebranded it to become PSB. We remain a Barisan National Friendly Party, but not as a component party. We were excluded and PSB was treated merely as a appendage to Barisan National. In order not to remain static, our party PSB embarked on membership drive and expansion. We began to take in prominent leaders who were sacked by some of the component parties of Barisan National. Many others also left their parties to join us overnight PSB membership swelled to tens of thousands. Barisan National component parties must have felt threatened. Soon after, Barisan National took steps to sideline us first by excluding us totally from the list of appointed councillors. The appointment to the posts of community leaders was also discontinued. Excluded also were some posts 
in government agencies, step by step, we were marginalized, treating us as an opposition party, labeling us as termites in the house. The last straw that broke the camel's back came with the parliamentary election in 2018. The late Dato Andrew Wong Kiyu was nominated as a Barisan national candidate, but he was unceremoniously arranged to contest under SUPP ticket. Overnight, PSB became not only an appendage to Barisan National, but also an appendage to SUPP. And therefore, in December 2018, I called a party special delegate conference. The only item on the conference agenda was for PSB to decide to stay or to leave Barisan National GPS. There came a unanimous decision to quit Barisan National, to quit GPS. Party leaders and members pledged to one another to swim and sink together. With the full backing from the party, I therefore resigned from the State Cabinet in August 2019, setting free PSB from Barisan National from GPS. PSB henceforth became an independent Sarawak-based multiracial party with no affiliation to any other political parties. We therefore set as a mission for Parti Sarawak Bersatu PSB to work for justice, equality, fair play and progress for all Sarawakians, irrespective of race, religion and culture. We set as our goal to struggle for the good of the people of Sarawak, each and everyone, one for all and all for one. We are to unite the divergent interests into a cohesive force to bring about greater harmony and unity for the people of Sarawak. As you all know, my life had undergone an unexpected turn of events. Life is not without tragedies. The sudden death of my son, Dato Andrew Wong Kiyo, could have stopped short my political pursuit but instead, my son's spirit and aspirations gave me a fresh burst of energy to move on. Life is indeed precarious and life can be short. We must do as much as we can before we can no longer do so. Dato Andrew Wong very often urged me, sometimes deep at night, over a cup of coffee to work hard to help the people of Sarawak, particularly the people in the rural areas. I'm old, but during the remaining years of my life, I have to continue to work hard. Another motivational factor urging me to move on is our late Chief Minister, Tan Sri Adinan Satem. I remember visiting him in 2014 in KL Specialist Hospital. Tan Sri Adenan was lying in bed in a half-dazed condition. But when his wife, Dato Jamila, whispered to him, your good friend Sunko is here to see you. He struggled to open his eyes and said to me, I'm worried for Sarawak. I'm worried for the people of Sarawak. Fortunately, he subsequently recovered to become the fifth chief minister of Sarawak. But unfortunately, only for a brief period, leaving a great deal of his vision, 
and dreams for Sarawat unfulfilled. Those words uttered by Tan Sri Adinan for his concern for Sarawat and the people of Sarawat deeply embedded in my heart, urging me to do more for the people of Sarawak. And so I must move on to work hard also to perpetuate his legacy. Even after I had resigned from the cabinet, I still traveled extensively through the length and breadth of Sarawak. Throughout my long journey, I saw that many of the rural areas are still very lacking in infrastructure facilities such as water and electricity supplies, road connectivity and internet services. A lot of time I had to travel using timber or plantation roads or travel long hours using long boats along treacherous rivers. I also witnessed many dilapidated schools and mainly poorly maintained, under-equipped and undermined rural clinics. On the other hand, GPS government kept announcing and embarking on mega ambitious or over-ambitious projects, such as the Second Tran Road, ART, hydrogen projects, and many other outlandish programs costing multi-billion ringgit. We in PSB strongly feel that our state Sarawak simply cannot afford at this stage of development to get ourselves bought down in those ambitious and low priority programs and projects. If PSB is given the chance to govern, will quickly reprioritize our development efforts to make sure that the people's basic needs are immediately taken care of and the fundamental requirements for a better living are provided for. When we talk of development, we must do things rationally and not impulsively. After all, development is about people and we must make people our priorities and nothing else. I know very well that growing old and dying occurs to all mortals. As I face the remaining years of my life, my feelings and attitudes can be summed up in those lines in the famous Robert Frost poem. I quote, the woods are lovely, dark and deep but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. I am duty bound to move on. I am a leader and the president of Party PSB with a membership of tens of thousands. PSB is now big enough and strong enough to be an alternative government to GPS. I have heavy duties and responsibilities on my shoulders. I'm almost 80 years old and I have nothing more to look forward to except the welfare and the well-being of the people of Sarawak. All I want to do is to make sure that Sarawak can be in better hands and can have better governance so that people can be better looked after. I therefore have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. I'm sure you would agree with me that people of Sarawak would like to have a better life. They want to have better education, more stable jobs, better income, more reliable social security, better medical and health care, better living conditions, a more conducive environment. They hope that their children can grow up well, will have good jobs and better lives. People's wish for a better life is the mission of PSB and 
is what we are going to struggle for. I do not look back, only ahead to building a better and brighter Sarawak as signified in our party logo, the bright rising sun shining over the fair land of Sarawak, our land and the land for our children and grandchildren. God bless us all.